Hey. Understanding Bitcoin's portfolio impact. So in recent years, Bitcoin has emerged as a distinct asset class, often behaving independently from traditional markets. We're going to be examining its correlation and volatility relative to major benchmarks like the S&P 500 and the U.S. dollar, providing insights into Bitcoin's potential role in portfolio construction. Despite its high volatility, Bitcoin's weak correlation with equities and traditional assets suggests it can serve as a diversification tool, potentially enhancing risk-adjusted returns without meaningfully increasing portfolio volatility. So let's get into it here with a little bit on some crypto. So the study, we're looking at 2015 to 2025. So there are some huge moves in Bitcoin over this period of time. So you have to keep that in mind. This is skewed in some ways because of those huge, huge move moves. But we're really going to look at the volatility aspect of it, not the total. We're going to look at total returns. But the, the aspect we're going to really isolate is volatility and what that effect a small allocation might have on your portfolio as a whole. Um, so we're going to look at the rolling 30-day historical volatility here, and we're going to look at what ratio of BTC to SPY is ideal for gaining Bitcoin exposure with minimal portfolio volatility. So this is for somebody, if you're trying to just dabble in crypto, this might be... Um, a good segment for you. I just I closed out the UNH puts we sold last week. Nice. Know. UNH catch a bid because it was one of the ones that was down earlier. It's still down a dollar thirty, but off of its uh, lows, uh, UNH traded down uh, to about uh, three twenty. It's three twenty three right now. So good job. Yeah, it's really volatility. Like I'm looking at this AMD strangle that I got. I'm short the two hundred three hundred strangle in December, and mm -hmm. I have six short, seven short deltas here into a thirteen dollar up move, and that strangle has moved about a hundred bucks. And I put that on in the middle of last week. Right. So it's really volatility is just coming off the board here. It's it's a fantastic day. For yeah. Me. Ivy rank has gone from f in the mid fifties to the low thirties or mid thirties right now in AMD. Beautiful. Uh, next slide here. Let's get into it. Uh, so over the past six months, Bitcoin has shown slightly higher correlation with the spy compared to its 10 year average. It's about a 0.38, which is not high. I would call this kind of like inconclusive to be completely honest. The 0 0.03, which is its longer duration average, is certainly inconclusive. Like this is completely random over a 10 year period in terms of the up versus down day on a day to day basis. So correlation here is relatively non correlated in in all when you're looking at the 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 it in totality in the last six months. It's been a little higher correlate, correlation, but certainly not the same as you'll get with like Apple or Microsoft to SPY. Those are going to be very, very high correlations. Bitcoin certainly has not been that that high of a correlation. Right. Also, during this time frame, Bitcoin has been has been slightly negatively correlated to the U.S. dollar. So again, this is not a, a a great correlation. Like it's a very random correlation here. It's 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 very much agnostic over a longer period of time to equities and the US dollar in in uh, across the board. So despite these short-term shifts, the correlations are still weak. Thus, Bitcoin provides another avenue of diversification to most asset classes. So, you know, the, the story here and in the graphics as well is that there isn't a, a high correlation here. You're looking at something that moves pretty independently, which is something that we target as a way to diversify in our portfolios, especially for somebody that's in like a buy and hold situation where you're passively long the market. You're always looking for things that kind of are uncorrelated where it might hedge you on a day where the market's down, or it might be more volatile when the market is up. Like that's what you're looking for in your portfolio. And that's, you know, kind of what you're seeing here. Very good. So next slide here. So comparing the 30-day rolling historical volatilities of Bitcoin and SPY since last year, Bitcoin has been considerably more volatile with larger his, uh, historical volatility swings happening much more frequently. So this chart is a little bit skewed because of the extreme volatility you had um, earlier in the year in Bitcoin as we exploded higher. But really what you can see here is that overall volatility in Bitcoin is much higher than, than equities. Not a shock 
to you there. Uh, you couple that with the the non correlation that you see, and it becomes an interesting asset to put some sort of allocation to, which is what we're going to look at in the next couple slides here. I like it. So jumping to the next slide here. Uh, so the daily returns distribution for Bitcoin has much fatter tails than SPY, and this has been in both directions, but you know, you're, you highlight like kind of the downside ones here, and has had instances of outlier moves as large as 40 or 45%, whereas SPY's largest daily swings typically stay within about 5%. This is not a shock if you've been looking at cryptocurrencies at for any period of time, really. They've had huge swings in both directions, and so here you can see you know, that the, the distribution is much wider, which is something that you should be looking for as a small piece of your portfolio if you are looking to outperform in some way to the upside, right? If everything goes, is correlated to the market and you basically just perform to the market, you're just buying the market. You need to diversify and have things that kind of are uncorrelated and uncorrelated in terms of volatility. You want some things that are higher volatility. You want some things that are lower volatility. That's how you diversify a, a portfolio, especially if you're doing, uh, if you're more like in the passive investing kind of space. You want to have this sort of exposure um, just to give you that, the sort of volatility, the higher volatility overall of the portfolio. Right. And then you throw in strategy diversification and you've got everything that we always talk about here on the show. Totally. Next slide here. So even though Bitcoin is around eight times more volatile than SPY, adding le less than two tenths of a Bitcoin to every 100 shares of SPY actually does not add to the overall portfolio volatility. And what that means is somewhere between, you know, with Bitcoin at 100,000, just to make it a round number, if you were to add between 10 and $20,000 per 100 shares of SPY, which we'll call, you know, 70,000 in cash, in capital, you know, a, a you know, 20 to 30% allocation to Bitcoin versus versus SPY, like for 100, 100K to have 70% in SPY versus, you know, 10 to 30% in Bitcoin won't really change your volatility. Um, and this is due to the diversification factors here of it being a smaller sized allocation. It, it tells you that you don't have to have, you know, that 1% isn't really going to do anything. It tells you that you got to get into like, you know, you can get a little bit bigger based on the correlations that we've had and just the distribution of returns. You can get a little bit bigger in your allocation here. Very good. As long as you're getting bigger while watching your size, right? You don't want to get. Yes. Too yes. A couple takeaways here. So Bitcoin has, has been virtually uncorrelated with the market in the past 10 years and has been positively but not strongly correlated to other major uh, cryptocurrencies. So obviously the, the crypto space moves with a much higher correlation than crypto versus SPY or, or UUP, which is what we use for the dollar. Bitcoin has been significantly more volatile than markets in the past five years, having had daily moves as large as around 45%. So it gives you a little bit of that higher volatility to add to your portfolio. Although Bitcoin is around eight times more volatile than SPY, adding less than two tenths of a Bitcoin to every 100 shares of SPY actually does not effectively add to overall portfolio volatility. Um, it tells you that you know adding this isn't going to give you massive tail risk to your portfolio as a whole. It's definitely something that you know should be looked at as as a as a piece to any sort of trade. Very good, nice little job there by the team uh, discussing and understanding how you can use Bitcoin uh, in your portfolio. You did a good job there, son. Even the S and P's they're up seventy six and change. They really haven't. Uh, moved here. The thing that has moved a lot is volatility down a dollar uh, twenty on volatility. Just to give you an idea on what kind of perspective that is, it's a six percent move in volatility. Um, as you just pointed out a moment ago, on a on a stock that's moved a little bit too far for you, you had a little bit of short delta. You're out basically. You know nothing on it. The whole thing right now is, what do you do with that position? Do you keep the delta or do you roll up the puts? That is the sixty four thousand dollar question. I'm gonna.